Uh, welcome to the webinar. Um, it looks like we've got one other person that's uh, just signing in right now, so I'm just going to give her a second um, until it shows that she's logged in. It looks like she just logged in. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, now, before we start, just a couple uh, instructions. We're going to have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. So these instructions here basically tell you you can call in by telephone or use your computer, microphone, and speakers. Um, looks like all of you are using your computer, mic, and speakers. Um, if you have any questions while I'm presenting, you can type them into the chat panel or the question panel, and Becca will pick up any of those questions while I present. Normally keep everyone muted. Um, while I'm presenting, because sometimes there can be a lot of noise in the background, and that's distracting for everybody else. Um, also, if you're running ZoomText right now, um, probably now is a good time to turn it off or at least decrease the magnification to 1x. Uh, you can disable ZoomText by pressing Alt-Delete on the keyboard. You can always re-enable it uh, by using Alt-Insert. But I will be running ZoomText, so you won't need to be magnifying um, what I'm showing you. Um, Today's webinar is a, uh, an introduction to ZoomText. Uh, my name is Derek Bovey. I work as a product specialist here at AI Squared in our sales and marketing department. And I'm going to walk you through uh, most of the basics of the product. So we have a, an outline here of what we're going to cover. Um, I'll kind of talk a little bit about what screen magnification is and what to expect when running a product like ZoomText. And then we'll go through most of the magnification and reading features. Um, before we talk about some of the new features in ZoomText 10. Um, now, if you are specifically interested in ZoomText 10's new features, we do have a webinar that covers that, um, specifically those new features, and that's every Thursday uh, at 3 o'clock Eastern time. So if you want more information on that, um, please sign up for that webinar. Now, with that being said, we're going to jump right into the live demo of ZoomText. So, uh, again, if you're running ZoomText, now might be a good time to either disable it or just bring the magnification all the way down. Um, I will be demoing ZoomText to you live over the Internet, so there might be a little bit of delay. It might look a little herky-jerky on your end, but that's just because we're doing all this live over the Internet, so there is going to be, um, there might be some hiccups here and there, so just keep that in mind. All right, so um, to start, the first thing I'm going to do is double-click on the icon for ZoomText to start the program. I don't have it running right now. Um, and like any other application on your computer, you can simply double-click on its icon and start the program. You'll be presented with the splash screen, uh, it says ZoomText 10, and you'll see the toolbar come up on screen. Now, for the sake of this webinar, um, I have ZoomText coming up at 1x or no magnification right now. I also have speech turned off. We'll get into the reading features a little bit later, um, but we're going to start with the magnification side of things, which is why speech is turned off. Um, very simply, when you start ZoomText, you can adjust the magnification level by clicking on the up and down arrows in the power spin box. And ZoomText, as I click on the button here, will gradually increase its magnification level. Right now, we're at about four times magnification. Um, basically, at this point, um, we're seeing about 1 16th of the entire desktop. So this is one of the things uh, when using a product like ZoomText um, that you'll need to get used to, and that's not being able to see the entire desktop at one time. Now very simply, um, I can move my mouse to the edge of my screen or what's visible, and ZoomText is going to track to the rest of the desktop. So if I continue to move along down, uh, I'll eventually hit my start menu in the lower left. I can continue across the taskbar until I reach the system tray in the lower right, and finally back around to where the toolbar is, which is right here. So one of the things when using a magnification product like ZoomText, you're presented with a limited view of the screen since you're magnifying it. Um, there are different ways to view this magnification, which we'll get into in a couple minutes. Those are our zoom window types. Um, now a few other things on the magnification. Um, zoom text can go all the way up to 36 times magnification, which at that point, you're only seeing a few letters on the screen at one time, uh, depending on your screen resolution. Um, the great thing about zoom text is we have a patented technology called XFont, which gives us print quality text at any magnification level. So even if you're at the highest magnification level, the text is very clear and easy to read. Um, so that's something that we have that nobody else out there has. Um, 
So a couple tips on changing that magnification level. You saw me change it from the up and down arrows here in the power spin box. You can also do it from the keyboard using a hotkey combination. Um, to increase the magnification power, it's Alt plus on the number pad. So hold down the Alt key and press the plus key on the number pad to increase your magnification level. And conversely, Alt minus will decrease your magnification level. So just a quick and easy way to do that. Um, if you were in another application, let's say you had your web browser open um, and you wanted to change your magnification level, uh, well, rather than going back to Zoom Text and changing it, I can just hit the hot keys, Alt plus to increase, Alt minus to decrease um, to change it without having to be uh, on the Zoom Text toolbar. Now, another way you can change that magnification level um, is by using the keyboard and the mouse. If you hold down the control key on the keyboard and scroll your mouse wheel up, it will increase your magnification level. Control mouse wheel down will decrease your magnification level. So you have a number of different ways to uh, change your magnification, uh, whether you're in an application or whether you're on the Zoom Text toolbar. Now, uh, at the beginning of the webinar, I asked you guys that were running Zoom Text to turn it off temporarily while I was presenting. One easy way you can do that, just click on the Zoom Text logo at the left-hand side of the toolbar. That'll enable, or excuse me, disable Zoom Text. Um, you'll see that the button is now grayed out and there's no magnification, and if speech was on, it would also turn off speech. So by clicking on that icon, you can very easily enable and disable Zoom Text. Um, there are hot keys for that as well. In this case, it's Alt-Delete to disable Zoom Text and Alt-Insert to re-enable the program. So quick and easy ways to just turn the program on and off. Um, you might have somebody come up to your machine that doesn't need magnification, so they can just hit Alt-Delete, turn it off, Alt-Insert to re-enable it once you get back to the computer. And then again, changing the magnification level is Alt-Plus and Alt-Minus. All of these hotkeys um, you can very easily find in the Help system. If you go to the Help menu and click on Zoom Text Help, this will open up our Help system, and there's a heading called Hotkeys or a topic called Hotkeys, and then Zoom Text Hotkeys, and you'll see them all listed over here. Um, they are also in the Quick Reference Guide, the User's Guide that comes with the product uh, as well. So um, there's basically hotkeys for every feature in the product. If you ever want to change any of the hotkeys, you can go to the Settings menu and choose Hotkeys, and here all the hotkeys will be listed. They're broken up by group. So for example, the magnification hotkeys are under the hotkey group called Magnification, and we see our increase and decrease magnification level hotkeys. And you could change this. See, right now it's Alt Numpad Plus. I could change it to Alt um, F9 if I wanted to, for example, and then just click OK. So um, lots of customization available. Uh, if you don't like the hotkeys, you can always go in and change them. So the next thing we're going to talk about um, are our Zoom window types. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, um, you know, right now we're using what's called full screen magnification, meaning our magnified view is taking up our entire screen. So um, the biggest detriment to this is that you can't see your whole desktop uh, since you're magnifying with full screen. But there are other zoom window types that allow you to see more of the desktop um, to kind of ease that transition. I'd say about 95% of our users um, primarily use full screen, but here are some other options that you have available as well. The first of which is called overlay. And basically what's happening here is in the lower right hand corner of my screen, I have a magnified preview um, of where my mouse pointer uh, or my text cursor focus is if I'm using the keyboard. So wherever, uh, wherever I'm at, I'm seeing a magnified version of that in the overlay window. And the rest of my desktop is unmagnified. So I'm able to see about 75% of the desktop um, unmagnified while still having the benefits of magnification in the overlay window. So basically it's good to, you know, kind of almost spot magnify um, so it's keeping track of your mouse pointer or if you're typing with your keyboard, for example, let's say you're in Notepad and, you know, I am typing a document. Okay, you can see the Zoom Text nicely uh, will track the text cursor or your mouse pointer, um, which brings me to another uh, important point, and I'm going to go back to full screen magnification to illustrate this. Uh, Zoom text will 
track basically any, any point of interest on the screen. So for example, if I were to close the program and click on this X, all right, there's a message box that comes up that asks me, do you wish to exit ZoomText? Now, I didn't move my screen to where that message box was. ZoomText automatically moved my view to it because that prompt came up. Um, so I'll do this again, just kind of a little bit more exaggerated. So if that X was in the lower left-hand corner of the screen and I clicked on it, you're going to see that my view jumped to that message box because it came up. Um, so this is something that's, you know, that kind of happens automatically with ZoomText. Uh, if a message box, dialog box comes up, we're going to attempt to track to it. If you open a new application, we're going to track to the top left-hand corner of the screen or of that application window um, so that it's in view. Um, so this concept of what's called tracking um, is very useful in ZoomText so that you don't lose sight of things that might come up on screen or when you open something. All right, um, so moving on down the Zoom window types, the next one we have is called Lens. And you can think of this as kind of like dragging a virtual magnifying glass around your screen. You see I have this rectangular box that's following my mouse pointer, and it's magnified underneath that box, but the rest of my desktop is not magnified. So again, you're able to see pretty much the entire layout of the desktop while still having the benefits of magnification. Um, one drawback to this is that the, the default lens size is kind of small. So if you were at a higher magnification level, you know, you can't really fit much information in there. Um, so what you can do, I'm just going to drop the magnification down a little bit here, is if you go to the type menu and go down to where it says adjust, if you click on that, that'll bring you into the adjust tool mode. And here you can actually adjust the size of your lens window. So if I left click and drag my mouse, I can just, you know, very easily resize it. So I'll make it a little bit bigger. <clears throat> and when I'm happy with the size of that, I can exit the adjust tool mode by hitting escape or right clicking my mouse. So now you can see um, my lens is a little bit bigger now. Okay, so if I was at 6x, I can hit that window. And all the zoom window types are adjustable, their location, their size. Uh, by using that adjust tool, all of them except full screen. Um, there's not really anything to adjust in the full screen mode. Okay, so that's lens. Uh, the next one I'm going to show you is called line view. And to best illustrate this, I'm going to go ahead and open a Word document. Um, if I turn it on right now, all you get is this, you know, horizontal strip of magnification on screen. It's not really handy um, <laughs> unless, uh, you know, you wanted to view things line by line in, in kind of a you know, using it as a ruler almost, but it's really best in, um, in a Word document. So I'll first open the document and then turn it on. Okay, so I just have a sample document here. Um, this is Microsoft Word. You can see the ribbon toolbar up at the top. And now I'm going to bring up Zoom Text and change to Pine. And now let's go back to our document. Okay, and I'm just going to use my arrow keys on my keyboard. Uh, to move up and down by line. So you can see that this nicely magnifies one line of text at a time. So if I were editing this document, maybe I was proofreading it, um, or even if you were just typing a new document, uh, this will just magnify one line of text at a time. So you know where your area of interest is in the application, uh, the line window, line zoom window will magnify that. And if the text is differing sizes, like the title up here um, is bigger than the body text, it'll actually adjust the size of the lens window to accommodate the larger text. So you don't have to worry if you have different font sizes if, if you're not going to be able to see it all. Uh, the line window will automatically accommodate it. All right, so the next four zoom window types I'm going to show you, I'm going to cycle to using the hotkey, <coughs> which in this case is Control-Shift-Z, as in zebra. Uh, that'll cycle you through all zoom window types that I'm showing you here today. So I'm going to hit that hotkey now. And that'll uh, move to our next zoom window type, which is called docked bottom. Um, these next four, you can think of them as split screen views. So the first one we have is docked bottom. The bottom half of our screen is magnified, and the top half is unmagnified. They're both showing the same thing. Um, just one is an unmagnified version of the other half of the screen. OK. So I'm going to hit the hotkey again, Control-Shift-Z. And now we have docked top. So it's the same idea, just the top half of our screen is magnified instead of the bottom. All right, let's hit the hotkey one more time. There are four of these docked 
mode. So I showed you docked top and docked bottom. Now we have docked right. So now our screen is split vertically instead of horizontally. Right half of the screen is magnified. Left half is unmagnified. And then lastly, we have docked left. So same thing, just opposite side of the screen is being magnified. And if I hit the hotkey one more time, that'll cycle me back to full screen magnification. So those are all the different zoom window types that you have available in Zoom Text. Um, there are other modes available if you have a dual monitor capable machine. Um, I can't demonstrate them to you over the internet, but I can explain how they work. There's basically three different modes, uh, one of which is called primary span view, where your magnified view is stretched across two screens, so effectively doubling uh, your horizontal width. Um, so at 2x magnification, you can fit the entire width of the desktop across two monitors, uh, really handy for document reading and things like that. Clone view, basically will show the same thing on both monitors, so um, if you wanted to you know, duplicate your magnified view to have on two devices or a projector or something like that, you could do that. And then the last mode, which um, I think is probably the most useful, is called primary with 1x view. And you can almost think of that like the overlay window. One monitor will be showing your magnified view full screen, and the other monitor will be showing an unmagnified view at 1x uh, of the same desktop. So think of how the overlay window works. Um, but on two monitors. One's magnified, the other is not. This can be very helpful if you are doing a presentation uh, to a group of sighted peers and your laptop is connected to a projector. Um, you want to project to them the unmagnified view of your presentation while you're viewing it magnified with Zoom Text. Um, they wouldn't be able to, to notice any difference because they're looking at it at 1x, but you have the benefits of magnification while you run the presentation um, on the other monitor. So those are our dual monitor modes that are available. Um, the last thing I'm going to talk about uh, in regards to the zoom window types is what's called the freeze window. And what this allows you to do is define an area of the screen that you want to be visible, um, even if it's outside of your view. So I'm going to click on the new button here next to the freeze icon. And I'll have what looks like a thermometer attached to my mouse pointer. And a good example for a freeze window is the clock the time down in the lower right hand corner. So to define a freeze window, I'm just going to left click and drag my mouse around that area of the screen. You'll see that now we're in our adjust tool mode. I could resize it if I don't like the size of it. Uh, if I left click in the middle, I can even move where the freeze window is. So let's say I put it in about the upper right hand corner of my screen. And when I'm happy with that, right click the mouse or hit escape to exit out of the tool mode. All right. And you, now you see that uh, where I've defined the freeze window around the clock is always visible on screen even though it's outside of my view. So that's the idea behind the freeze window. Uh, if you want to keep something in view at all times, uh, again the clock being a good example, um, this is how that would work. And this is dynamic, uh, so the time will update there. Even though it's called freeze window, the view itself is not frozen. Um, so once it changes to 1220, that should update. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, if you create a freeze window in an application or something and you minimize it, it's just going to show whatever is in that area of the screen at the time. So, for example, you know, if I move my mouse over that area of the screen, you see it show up in the freeze window. If I were to resize my taskbar, you'll see that that affects the freeze window. So you want to choose an area on screen that's not going to be obstructed or changed, which is why the clock is a very good example. And you can see it just changed to 1220 as well. So I'm going to go back and turn that off by going to the Type menu, choosing Freeze, and then Disable. And you see that that disappeared. All right. <clears throat> um, so that concludes uh, what we're going to talk about in terms of the magnification power and type settings. The next thing we're going to talk about are the screen enhancements. And the first one I'm going to show you is uh, what's called the color filter which allows, uh, allows you to change all of the colors on screen to improve contrast. So if I click on the button right now, it's set to normal color, meaning the enhancement is turned off. Uh, we have preset schemes here, which is what I'm going to show you here today. You can create your own custom scheme by going down to settings. If you like a subset of some of these preset schemes, you can customize it further by going to settings. 
So I'm going to show you a few of these, the first of which is called uh, invert brightness. Now when I do this, this is going to reverse all the light and dark values on the screen. So if we look at our document, it's now white text on a black background, which is much higher in contrast and a lot easier to read. So the whole idea behind the color filter is to help improve contrast and readability of text on screen. Um, now this will change all of the colors, so if you look at the toolbar, uh, the ribbon toolbar is up here, all of this is inverted as well. If I go back to my desktop, you'll also see the desktop background has changed color too. So that's just something to keep in mind. You don't want to be using the color filter um, if you're looking at pictures on Facebook or something like that, because it will invert everything. But for reading text, uh, like on the web, or if you're in a document, uh, perfect place to use it. So I'll show you a few others. Um, that was invert brightness. There's also another one called reverse video, which is very similar, except reverse video changes all of the colors. Invert brightness will uh, reverse the light and dark values. Reverse video changes everything. So, you know, red, blue, green, those are all inverted now. Um, you can kind of see that on the toolbar here as well. They're similar, um, but, you know, they, they both have areas where you might use one or the other. For example, um, if you needed to change document colors, okay, right now this says it's blue. In reality, it's red. Um, but since we're using reverse video, it inverted the color. If I show you what it looks like normally, you'll see, um, actually this was yellow, I'm sorry. Um, this was red. But reverse video is going to invert those colors where invert brightness will not. A uh, few others, you have yellow on black, for example. So if you like yellow text on a black background, you can see how that looks here. Um, so you've got shades of yellow uh, and black. There are no colors, simply yellow on black, kind of like the old monochrome uh, monitors, the green and black. Um, you have black and white, you know, desaturated image, and white on black, so white, black, and gray as well. So that's the color filter. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Again, if you like a subset of those, uh, you can always customize it further by going down to settings. So I'm going to set this back to normal. All right, the next enhancement we're going to talk about is the pointer enhancement. Set up the same way as the color filter. It's, you know, you have the same layout here with the preset schemes. So we're just going to walk through some of the presets, um, starting with the first one, which is called yellow with full cross. And what this is going to do is really make our mouse pointer stand out on screen. So you can see now, my mouse pointer is larger, it's yellow in color, and it has this cross intersecting it where the mouse pointer is, making it really easy for me to identify on screen. Okay, so much like the color filter helped the readability of text, this is enabling me to uh, more easily locate the mouse pointer. So I'll go through a few others here. Um, you have the red with circle, where the mouse pointer is circled. There's even a preset here called circle when moving, where if you move your mouse pointer, it'll circle it. If it's stationary, that circle disappears. So a lot of people like it to be circled when they're moving it, so they can identify it when they need to move the mouse, but they don't always want it visible. So when it's stationary, have it disappear. Um, and then you even have one like the giant green enhancement, where the mouse pointer is an even extra large size um, and high contrast color. So you can see how that looks. Um, but many people prefer just a simple large yellow scheme here, just a little bit bigger. And the yellow color against the white background is very high in contrast, making it easy to pick up. So I'm going to leave it on that uh, for the rest of the presentation. So that's our pointer enhancement. Um, the next enhancement is called the cursor enhancement. And what this is going to do um, is uh, make the text cursor more easy to locate. And by text cursor, I mean that blinking eye bar in a text edit field or a document. Right now it's next to the word or next to the letters Y and S in the word Gettysburg and it's blinking. For a lot of people it's very difficult to pick up. So what the cursor enhancement is going to do, and again we have preset schemes here. I'm going to choose the first one which is called blue wedge. Now immediately I don't see anything different on screen. I'm still in zoom text and here there's no text cursor available so I'm not going to see anything that looks any different. But if I go back to Microsoft Word, you'll see that there are these blue wedges highlighting where the text cursor is, making it very easy to pick up on screen. And I'm just arrowing around so you can see how easy that is to find. 
So again, the whole idea behind that is to make the text cursor easier to locate on screen. And it's high contrast um, and doesn't really interfere with anything else on screen as well. So that's the cursor enhancement. Um, the last enhancement we're going to talk about is called the focus enhancement. And what this does um, is provide some additional highlighting uh, to what the operating system is already doing. So whenever you move your mouse over a menu item or if you're arrowing with your keyboard, um, Windows is showing a highlight. In this case, it's very low in contrast. It's white, excuse me, uh, light blue on a light gray background, which is really low in contrast. So it's probably uh, hard for people to see to begin with. Um, so what the focus enhancement does is provide some additional highlighting to really make that stand out. So again, I'm going to go to the schemes and choose the red rectangle scheme. And now that I've done that, if I open up the focus enhancement menu again, you'll see that now I have this red rectangle highlighting wherever I'm moving my mouse, or if I use my keyboard, um, it's highlighting as well. So just really making that system highlight stand out. And this will work pretty much anywhere. Um, if you open your start menu, it'll highlight items on the start menu. Uh, sorry, my mouse is drifting a little bit here on the desk. Um, but you know, anything you arrow up and down the start menu or a dialog box with, it'll highlight there as well. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and change that back to normal. Okay, so those are our screen enhancements. Um, again, the whole idea behind this is to make things easier to locate on screen, all of these enhancements. Um, I'm going to talk briefly about our finders. We don't normally demonstrate these, uh, and we do show the web finder in the Zoom Text 10 webinar. Desktop finder, you can think of kind of like Google Desktop Search. It allows you to search for files or programs on your computer and easily execute them. You can even search for control panel items if you like. Um, basically, just a quick way to look for things. This has kind of been replaced by the functionality of the Start menu in Windows 7 and Windows Vista, where you can simply open the Start menu and just type in what you're looking for, uh, and it shows up in the results here. Um, so, um, but just an easy way to launch applications uh, from, the, from Zoom Text. Web Finder allows you to easily navigate and filter for content on the web. Um, again, we go into more detail for that in the Zoom Text 10 webinar. This button is grayed out right now. It's only available when you have a supported web browser open, like Internet Explorer 8 or Firefox 4 or newer. Um, that button will be lit up and it'll bring you into Web Finder, allow you, allow you to search for any text that's visible on screen, navigate through results, or um, search by web page element as well. So it's a very uh, complex tool that we go into more detail in the other webinar. And Text Finder allows you to search for any text that's visible on screen. So if I type in something, it'll highlight it, show, show me where it is on screen, uh, and allow me to even start reading from there if I wanted to. So that does it for um, the magnification-related tools in the product. Um, so now we're going to switch over to the reading side of things. Um, and to do that, I'm going to click on the Reader tab. Now there are three tabs across the top of the Zoom Text toolbar and they are separated by types of features. We went over the magnifier features. There is a set of reading tools, which I'm going to go over with you now, and then some miscellaneous tools, uh, which are new in Zoom Text 10, which we'll talk about uh, at the end of the webinar. So let's go ahead and click on the Reader tab. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, uh, I had speech disabled to start the webinar. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on uh, by clicking on the Speech button and choosing Enable. Speech. Enabled. And now Zoom Text alerted me that speech is now enabled. Um, now, before I show you any specific features relating to speech, uh, I just want to show you kind of what to expect with speech turned on. So now that I have speech turned on, if I were to, you know, open an application like Microsoft Word, and I'm just going to click on it to make it active. Gettysburg address dot compatibility mode Microsoft Word. In this case, what Zoom Text did was read the window title of the application that became active which says Gettysburg Address dot doc compatibility mode Microsoft Word. So effectively, whatever I'm doing, Zoom Text is going to alert me audibly as to what that is. So if I were to hit the, the Windows key on my keyboard, search box, Zoom Text tells me I'm in the search box. If I start arrowing up my start menu, all programs, all programs has sub menu, tells me that I'm on the all programs item and it has a sub menu. If I keep going up, snipping tool, sticky notes, 
calculator. You can hear that it's reading the label of all those items. Um, so this concept is called screen reading. ZoomText is basically reading back to me uh, what I'm doing as I navigate through my computer. So a lot of people that are severely low vision rely on speech to help them uh, read text information on the screen. They might not be able to easily read what that text says, but with the help of speech reading it back to them, um, they can get a better understanding of where they are on their computer. Zoom right. text. So let's, zoom. let's go back to Zoom text. Um, you have a rate indicator here to either slow down or speed up the speech rate. I'm going to keep it at the default, which is 50%. Um, so if you want it to speak faster, you want it to speak slower, you can just change that by clicking on the up and down arrows in the rate spin box. The hot key for that is control numpad plus and control numpad minus. Um, now specific speech features, the first thing we're going to talk about is called typing echo. And what this does is controls what ZoomText does uh, or what it speaks as you're typing. So you have a bunch of different options here. Uh, the default of which is ZoomText will speak the words as you type. You can also have it echo the individual keys or both keys and words or have it say nothing. So let's take a look at how this works. And to do that, uh, I'm going to open a new document in Microsoft Word. Gettysburg address dot compatible info. And so let's choose new. New. Blank document. Okay. Microsoft Word. All right. So now I'm just going to go ahead and start typing. Hello and thank you for attending. All right. So in this case, with Word Echo turned on, ZoomText will repeat back to me each word as I type it. Um, effectively, after you type a word and hit the space bar, ZoomText will then announce what that word was. So I'm getting audio feedback as to what I just typed, which is very helpful um, for a lot of people. Uh, now, if you do misspell a word, for example, um, the synthesizer will do its best to try and pronounce whatever you typed. It won't give you any cues as to, oh, you misspelled that, but it might just sound a little bit funny if you misspelled a word. Um, now, key and word echo, this is what that would sound like um, with keys and words being selected. H O W how I S is T H E the W E A T H E R weather. All right. So in that case, with key and word word echo turned on, Zoom text would repeat back to me each individual key, then the word after I hit the space bar. Um, now, notice that I had to type a lot more deliberately uh, in that situation to hear each one of those keys spoken back. Um, for that reason, uh, ZoomText is set to word echo by default. Um, for those people that are touch typists and don't need to rely on hearing each individual key heard back to them, uh, you're going to want to use word echo. If you're just getting familiar with the keyboard or maybe you have a new machine and you're not familiar with your keyboard layout, uh, then you can have it set to keys or keys and words. But for the most part, um, people are, are going to keep it on word echo. So that's how typing echo works with ZoomText. Um, basically repeats back anything that you type with your keyboard, and you can customize what you want it to speak back to you. All right. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about uh, is what's called mouse echo. And what this feature will do is effectively use your mouse pointer as a spot reading tool to allow you to point at text on screen and have it read back to you. So there's two modes of operation, and this is turned off by default. Um, the first of which is called instant. Instant. And instant echo means the uh, immediately when your mouse pointer you know, hovers over a word or moves over a word, it's going to read it to you. It'll read the line uh, of text if it's a document. If it's an object like an icon, it'll read that entire icon label uh, immediately. Hover echo. Hover will require you to hold your mouse pointer over the text for about a half second before it starts reading. So I'll show you Instant Echo first, and then show you why you're probably going to want to use Hover Echo. Instant. OK. So with this turned on, um, if I hover over any words here. Readers. Zones. App. Settings. OK. You can see the Zoom text is immediately reading the text. Application. Microsoft. Word. And if we go back to the uh, sentence I just typed, if I point my mouse pointer to any word in this sentence, it's going to read that sentence back to me. So I'll put my mouse pointer over the word how. Hello and thank you for attending. How is the weather? All right, so you can see that was immediately read back to me. Now if I go to my desktop, Gettysburg. okay, and just hover over any of these icons. Adobe Reader X. Quick Time Player. Microsoft Word 2010. 
Zoom text 9.1. Okay, so anytime I hover my mouse over any of those, uh, any word in those icons, it's going to read the whole thing back to me. Now, this is really handy, again, for spot reading and things like that, but the problem you might encounter is if you're in something like a document or maybe you're in an article on the web, um, here's what's going to happen with Instant Echo. Yep. All right, and I've already kind of had to fake this out by, um, if you ever want to interrupt Zoom text from speaking, just tap the control key and it'll stop it from reading whatever it's currently reading. Um, but in the case of a document, Four and again, it's starting to read before I want it to. Um, if I were to just move my mouse, you know, down a couple lines of text, here's what's going to happen. Four score and content proposition, great, prop con great proposition. That All right, I'm just going to hit the control key to interrupt it. So, you know, I'm just moving my mouse to move my view, and any time I encounter a new line of text, Zoom text is trying to read it back to me, which for most people is going to be really, really annoying. Um, it's probably not what you're intending to do, but since mouse echo is set to instant, any time you, you hover over a new line of text or a new item, it's going to immediately read it back to you. So for that reason, Zoom um, typing. let's go ahead and choose hover echo. Hover. All right. And if we go back here, I'll do that same demonstration. And you'll see it's not reading anything. Okay, let's say I want to read. Oh, I want to read this line. Battlefield of the war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that. So you can see, once I found the line that I wanted to read, or the item I wanted to read, I just held my mouse pointer stationary over it for about a half second. And then it started to read, which is a much more controlled way to use the feature. So if you want to use Mouse Echo, highly recommend that you choose Hover. Um, unless you need all of that speech feedback given to you um, at all times. There are folks that, you know, whose, whose vision is, uh, or vision loss is so severe that they, you know, kind of need the mouse echo to immediately read the text to them so they can figure out where they are. Um, but for most people, I think you're going to prefer hover echo. And I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. No echo. Okay. The next thing I'm going to talk about is this control here. Um, which is abbreviated, it's called verbosity. And what this does is controls the amount of information that ZoomText speaks. Um, by default, it is set to expert, which means ZoomText is only going to speak the most essential information on screen. Um, so let's change it to beginner, beginner, and I'll kind of explain to you what it's doing now that I set it to beginner. So now that it's set to beginner, it's going to speak more text information. So I'll open my start menu. Search box, edit box. It tells me I'm in the search box, edit box, telling me what type of control it is. Before it just, excuse me, search box. If I arrow up. All programs button. All programs has sub menu for shortcut use A. Now it's telling me that it's a button uh, and what its shortcut key is. Before it just said all programs has sub menu. Snipping tool for shortcut use S. And then the other items, it'll tell me what the shortcut key is. So it's giving me more information. Uh, with that verbosity control. So if you want to know things like the shortcut key or what type of control it is, um, you can change that setting to beginner uh, to do that. Most people prefer it on expert. They just want to hear the label. They don't really care what the control type is or what the hotkey is for that. But zoom text choose or And if you really want to fine tune it even more, settings dot 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 for shortcut. Go down to settings and you'll have um, a bunch of different check boxes here. Speech disabled. I want to just disable speech there. I hit another hot key by mistake. Um, but you can uh, check or uncheck these items based on whether or not you want it to speak. All right, so the last thing we're going to talk about are our reading tools in Zoom Text, um, which are called App Reader and Doc Reader. Um, now they both work in the same fashion. They're used to read any type of text content, whether it's a document, email, web page, PDF document, um, anything like that. It's used to read any text content start to finish. The only difference between the tools is how they appear visually. Doc Reader is going to take the text from the application that you're in and present it to you uh, in kind of like a teleprompter view. Uh, whereas App Reader will highlight directly on screen in the application that you're currently reading. So I'll show you Doc Reader first. Um, we're in Microsoft Word. Okay, so it's going to read our Gettysburg Address document. And uh, I'm just going to place the cursor at the beginning here. And let's go ahead and start Doc Reader. 
So now I'm brought to another interface where I can see the text from my document. It's high contrast, white text on a black background. Um, it's highlighting the word the, which is at the beginning of the document. And very easily, if I wanted to start reading, I can hit the Enter key or left-click on the Play button. Play the Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated. And I'm going to pause that by left-clicking the mouse or hitting the Enter key. So now it's paused. Um, I can adjust the speech rate in the rate spin box here. I can adjust the magnification level. Power spin box 6x. Okay, so if I want to increase or decrease it. Power spin box 7x. I can do that there. Um, there's also another mode called ticker. Ticker, but ticker mode. Where the text will now scroll horizontally at the top of the screen. Um, and I'll see a 1x preview of my document below it. So instead of top to bottom in the prompter view, uh, now it's left to right. Dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Okay, and the enter key will play and pause. I'm just hitting enter on the keyboard. Uh, and let's prompter go back button. to the prompter. Prompter mode. The reason a lot of people like Doc Reader is that the text only flows vertically up and down. There's no side to side scrolling, uh, which a lot of people don't like. Um, lastly, there is a button. settings button here, which allows you to customize the font, uh, face, style, document colors, and highlight shape and color. So this is what it looks like right now. I'm just going to make a couple changes so you can see you know, that you can customize this. So I'll change the font face and style, make it yellow text on a black background uh, with a red highlight that's an underline. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like now. Click OK, and you see that now that's updated in the Doc Reader interface. So you can customize that to whatever you see fit. Um, this will read start to finish. It'll go all the way to the end of the document. But if you want to exit Doc Reader, um, you can very simply hit the Escape key or right-click the mouse, much like uh, exiting the Adjust Tool mode from the beginning of the presentation. Or you can also left click exit, on the Exit, exit button. button. All right, so I'll just hit Escape. Now we're back to my document. And it actually leaves a text cursor at where Doc Reader ended as well. So that's how Doc Reader works. Um, now I'm going to show you App Reader. And when I start App Reader, it's going to immediately start reading from the text cursor position uh, in the case of this Word document. If I was on the web, I'd actually have to click on the word where I want it to begin. So let's start App Reader. Equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. Okay, and I just hit the Enter key to pause App Reader. You can also left-click the mouse. Um, now that it's paused, uh, now I'm not able to make any changes to the document. I can't save it or open another application. I'm still in the App Reader tool mode. You can see that little frame icon attached to my mouse. But what I can do is I can left click on any word that's visible on screen and have it start reading from there. New nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Okay, and I'm going to hit enter again to pause it. So notice the app reader, we're still in Microsoft Word. All right, it's just highlighting on screen as to where it's currently reading. Um, and when you're done with app reader, simply right click your mouse or hit escape. Um, I think you, by now you can see a theme appearing here. If you ever want to get out of anything in Zoom text, it's usually the escape key or right clicking the mouse. All right, so now we're out of app reader. You can see that that icon's uh, no longer on my mouse pointer. I can see the text cursor visible on the word now and we're back to having control. Okay, all right, so that basically does it for the presentation side of things. Um, a few other things I want to just talk about really quickly, um, and then we'll open up the question and answer. Some of the new features in Zoom Text 10, first of which is Zoom Text Camera. Allows you to use a high-definition webcam to view printed material right on your computer screen. Um, so I have a, a newspaper, it's visible under the camera. Uh, we have various two-color schemes that are available to allow you to um, improve the contrast of that and readability. All right, this is using an off-the-shelf high-definition webcam. Um, we are selling an official camera and stand bundle for $149. Comes with the ca camera and stand. If you want a little bit more information on that, you can check out our website um, or go to the Zoom Text 10 webinar. But very affordable solution that allows you to read printed material right on your computer screen. We've also introduced a couple new reading tools. 
first of which is called Zoom Text Recorder. It allows you to convert text into an audio file, uh, like a WAV file or Windows Media Audio. You can also easily export that to iTunes or Windows Media Player and then sync it to a mobile device like an iPhone or an iPod. Background Reader, um, I just showed you the reading tools in Zoom Text, um, but, uh, and basically when you're in those tool modes you can't do anything else. Well, Background Reader allows you to multitask. So you can be listening to Zoom Text read something back to you uh, while you're typing in a document or answering emails. So Background Reader lets you listen to text content in the background. And lastly, this Image Reader heading. Um, Image Reader is a forthcoming companion product to Zoom Text that will be sold separately uh, at an additional cost. Um, it will come with a document camera and OCR software package to allow you to take a picture of printed material and have it read back to you. Um, that's scheduled for release sometime later this year, probably late summer, early fall um, is, is what we're looking at. Uh, but we'll have more details on our website about that uh, once there's more information. Lastly, a couple quick tips. Um, if you've made changes to Zoom Text, you like the way it's set up, you like your magnification level, your pointer enhancement, your colors, make sure you go to the File menu and choose Save as Default. This will save your current settings as the default setting, so every time you start Zoom Text, it comes up in that configuration. So just click the Yes button to accept that. Uh, then finally, if you go to the Settings menu and choose Program, this will open up the Program Preferences menu. Um, here you can choose if you want Zoom Text to start automatically when the system starts, just by checking that box. You can also have Zoom Text start from a shortcut key. Um, just check that, and Zoom Text will launch by pressing Control alt shift z on the keyboard. If you don't like that hotkey, left-click your mouse in there, hold down at least one of the Control alt or shift keys, and then press another key. So you could do Alt-F12 if you wanted to, um, to have Zoom Text start from that hotkey. Uh, just make sure, be aware that there are uh, hotkeys that other programs might use, so um, you might run into issues if you did something like Oh, I don't know, I think Control F1 is usually, you know, to open help topics and things like that, but you can customize it. And then just click the OK button at the bottom of this window to save it. All right, so that concludes our demonstration portion of the webinar. Um, just a few other things to talk about before we open it up to Q&A. I have our sales and support hotlines listed there. Technical support is available Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Tech support is free on our product. Even if you haven't even purchased a copy, um, we'll be glad to help you with using Zoom Text or setting it up. If you have any questions on using features or run into any issues, um, please contact our support department. Uh, this webinar is given every Wednesday at noon Eastern Time, so 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we also have the Zoom Text 10 webinar every Thursday, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. And our technical support department also gives about one webinar every month on specific topics with Zoom Text. These are all currently free. Um, lastly, we have a worldwide network of dealers that resell our product. Um, so if you want to uh, speak with someone in person or maybe get some in-person training, go to our website, aisquared.com. Click on the Dealers tab up at the top. They're listed by state here in the U.S. and country internationally. So. Uh, to find a dealer that's local to you, please check out our website, uh, and they'd be glad to help you. All right, with all that being said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you guys, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, we'll be here for another cu another couple minutes. I don't know if there were, were there any questions during the webinar. Okay. And if we can't hear you for whatever reason, um, I have you guys unmuted, but I don't hear anything on the other end. Um, so it might be that your microphone's not set up correctly. If you do have questions and we just can't hear you, type them into the chat panel or the questions panel. And if for whatever reason you think of something uh, afterwards that you just forgot to ask, you can contact us, the webinar staff. The email address is learning at AISquared.com and we can pick up any questions that you have there.
All right. Well, it doesn't look like there's any questions today, so I'm going to go ahead and, and end the webinar. Um, thank you guys for attending. We hope you enjoyed the webinar um, and uh, got a lot out of it, and hope you have a great rest of the day.